Godzilla X Kong poses a big mystery right off the bat. How do you say its title? Is it Godzilla X Kong? Is it Godzilla Times Kong? Hmm, what to do? After a quick Google search, however, it turns out that director Adam Wingard says the X is silent, so really the movie's just called Godzilla Kong, The New Empire. So this is the fifth film in Warner Brothers and Legendary's MonsterVerse saga, which, to be sure, has been very hit and miss. For every Kong Skull Island, there's an entry that leaves us scratching our heads with its shared universe mythology, mostly related to the evil company Monarch, which recently got its own show on Apple TV+. Interestingly, this universe has never been tremendously successful with audiences, and Warner Brothers would have likely just thrown in the towel were it not for the fact that Godzilla vs. Kong was a surprise smash at the box office. It opened exactly a year into the pandemic, at a time when no one was going to see movies, but those who did found the dose of escapism and offered rather welcome. It made $100 million domestically, which is pretty amazing considering how nobody was going anywhere at the time, and nearly four times that overseas. Plus, the movie also even went day and date on HBO Max, so the fact that it made close to $500 million, bravo. Thus, it gets this sequel, as I said before, which is just called Godzilla Kong and not Godzilla X Kong. Kind of confusing, though. And I suppose this signifies that the two are, well, pals now and have become kind of the tango and cash of the monsterverse. Director Adam Wingard is back, and this time he's brought in his frequent collaborator, writer Simon Barrett, to have a hand in the screenplay. Simon Barrett, of course, wrote The Guest for Wingard, which I believe is still his best movie by a long shot. Speaking of The Guest, the movie also co-stars Dan Stevens, who fills one of the requisite human roles, alongside returning stars Brian Tyree Henry, Rebecca Hall, and Kaylee Hoddle. So, is Godzilla Kong, again, not Godzilla X Kong, better than Godzilla vs. Kong, or just as good, or not anywhere near as good? Well, let's find out, shall we? Well, I had a ton of fun with this flick. I have one big complaint. While the trailers made it look like it's a non-stop bro-fest between Godzilla and Kong, the two are kept apart for close to 90 minutes with this movie just under two hours. All the scenes you've seen of them doing their thing together in the trailers is from the last chunk of the film. While that's a bummer, I must admit that I found myself surprisingly engaged by the build-up. While Godzilla x Kong, or as I said before, Godzilla Kong, has the misfortune of coming out hot on the heels of Godzilla Minus One, my choice for the best kaiju movie ever, Adam Wingard and his writers did something smart. They made this an action flick with Kong or Stallone-esque underdog hero. So in the movie, there's a distress call that's coming from an uncharted part of Hollow Earth, which is where Kong lives, that only his pal Gia, once again played by Kaylee Hoddle, and Godzilla can sense, leading the latter on a rampage. Thankfully, Kong just happens to be up on Earth getting a little bit of elective surgery via a badass vet named Trapper, who works on Titans and is played by an awesome Dan Stevens. So Kong accompanies Gia, her adopted mother, Rebecca Hall's Dr. Eileen, who happens to be Trapper's college ex, and Brian Tyree Henry's Bernie, who's been brought back for no other reason than comic relief, to the Hollow Earth to find out, hey, what's going on? So one notable thing about Godzilla and Kong is how minor the human roles are here. Kong is thoroughly the protagonist, with him discovering a lost civilization of apes and making an arch enemy he needs to do away with. He even gets a sidekick in a baby ape. Kong has been given a bit of an action star makeover, with him having a bit of a six-pack and some Kong stubble. Seeing him next to the other apes, I couldn't help but think to myself how much better looking he is than them. I mean, it's almost like they were trying to make Kong sexy? I mean, am I crazy? If you're more of a Godzilla fan, you'll be disappointed by his limited screen time, although he does get a nice gag or two involving his favorite place on Earth to nap, because I mean, where would Godzilla sleep? Again, the humans are a bit of an afterthought in this movie, but Dan Stevens really seems to know exactly what kind of film he's in. He brings a lot of energy to his cool role. Someone compares him to Ace Ventura, which isn't far off. Imagine Ace Ventura as an action star and played by Kurt Russell in the 80s, and you get an idea of what they're going for here. If anything, he even seems somewhat based on Elliot Gould's Trapper John from Robert Altman's M.A.S.H., with him even kind of dressed the same way in addition to sharing a name. 
It's also nice to see the often underused Stevens in an uncomplicated heroic role, and he's the most memorable human in the film. Now, if only him and the director, Adam Wingard, would make the guests too already. I mean, that's the movie I want to see. The rest of the humans are fine. Hall is basically around to handle all the exposition, while Henry is around to crack jokes. Him and Dan Stevens actually play pretty well off each other and would be awesome in a buddy movie. Wingard seems to have been given more creative freedom here, with a lot of synth wave on the soundtrack mixed with the more traditional action score by Junkie XL. There are also a lot of 70s rock needle drops, with Trapper being a music guy. Even if this aspect seems like it was plucked out of Guardians of the Galaxy, I still had fun with some of the song choices, particularly a nice nod towards Canadian rockers Loverboy. If loving Loverboy is wrong, well, I don't want to be right. The fun, bubblegum-chewing vibe from the first film that people really dug is back here with it paced like a roller coaster ride, even if he can't help but wish the two monsters had more face time. Perhaps in the sequel, Godzilla plus Kong, or maybe more provocatively, Godzilla Hearts Kong? Wouldn't that be a wonderful movie? That's what I want to see now. So is Godzilla X Kong The New Empire a kick-ass kaiju movie? No. It's not even remotely comparable with Godzilla Minus One, but just like the last one, I had a more than decent time with this. And in fact, there was a child next to me that was decked out head to toe in Godzilla gear who was jumping up and down on his seat and having a whale of a time. I wasn't quite having the blast that he was, but I did enjoy myself. I turned my brain off and had fun, so I give this a solid 7 out of 10.